Hi there, my name is Bree. Welcome to Nectar Nitty Chats. Um, this is episode three, uh, where I talk a little bit about my projects that I've got going on, my upcoming projects, my finished projects, and just kind of random nitty chat. So like I said, welcome to episode three of Nectar Nitty Chats. I'm Nectar Nitty Chats here on YouTube and I'm Nectar Knits on Instagram. Definitely would love to connect, so feel free to follow me on Ravelry. My name is Brie Callahan. I will have to add that in to the description because I'm going to try and be more diligent about uploading my projects in there because I found people's projects in there to be super helpful. So thank you so much for watching and I'm just gonna get started. I kind of had the idea to do this episode from Hive Knits. Uh, she did a stash dive of her yarn and kind of decided projects. And that is something I will say I have been more intentional about buying yarn with a project in mind. So today I have pro yarn that I have bought for specific projects except for there is one that I'm kind of playing with a couple project ideas with that I might need some advice on. But today I'm going to do a part of my stash dive and I'm going to also talk about the different projects that I've been working on uh, before I start those next ones that I'm going to talk about. So first off, what I'm wearing. So this is also my only finished object. Um, I shouldn't say only, this is my finished object since my last uh, Nectar Knitty Chats. Uh, this is the Brookline Blouse by Mezzo Makes. I have been wearing this pretty much constantly since I finished it. It's it's nice and fluttery and airy, so it's uh, been really nice for the warmer days here. It's been definitely, I, on one day, I think it was like 85 degrees, so it's been nice to kind of wear around the apartment. I'm really happy with the fit. Uh, the yarn is super comfy. So I did this as part of the Mezzo Makes Along, which is still running. This was a pretty quick project. So if you want to hop on, I recommend it for sure. I made it in, I think, less than a week. I think, honestly, after my Farfa top, which was uh, fingering weight on small needles, this was... DK weight on, I think, US size 8. I'm not sure the millimeter on that part in my American sizing. And so it worked up really, really fast, and I'm really happy with the result. So, like I said, this is the Brookline Blouse by Mezzo Makes on Instagram, and I used Malabrigo Arroyo. Gosh, I can't roll my R's, so pardon my pronunciation. Um, it's a super wash uh, DK weight from Malabrigo, which is like my first, Malabrigo is definitely my first love and my first dive into hand dyed and more um, luxury yarns. So this is 100% super wash merino and the colorway Lotus. I bought this, I think probably over eight months ago with this specific project in mind. Um, the pattern is super well written. Uh, Kate uses charting to, to describe the, the pattern instead of just round one, round two, round three, round four. And at first I remember opening that pattern when I was early, my early days of knitting and being like, oh my gosh, like super intimidated by the chart. But this time around, I was like, this is such a great way to keep this pattern condensed and it's super readable and very well thought out. And so I actually really enjoyed it. So if I know somebody commented on it that the chart was a little intimidating, I would say, honestly, if the way she has it is it's like on the chart, it'll be like for this round, you're doing this like color which is associated with this row and so if you're intimidated by it you could write it out for your own size but I found it to be really great so I definitely was really happy I 
I feel like with garments, I want to start getting to a place where I'm, I re-knit some of them. And this is definitely a project that I could see myself knitting again in the future for myself or for a gift or a friend. Um, because I have a lot of DK weight yarn. It's definitely one I use a lot of. I feel like a lot, it's, it's very popular in a lot of patterns. So anyway, and I only used about, I think, 77 grams, so just under two skeins of Malabrigo, and I, I probably could have made it like a smidge longer, but it's meant to be cropped and it's got this little frill, so I'm personally very happy with it. I spend most of my days, as I'm wearing right now, in high-waisted everything, shorts, leggings, jeans all high-waisted. I am very, love love a high-waisted fit. So I'm super happy with it. Uh, I, I think the V-neck, it did grow a little bit in, with wear, so I'm happy I didn't do a deeper V-neck, which uh, is offered as a modification. So I just really liked the pattern. Um, the other thing I like about it is Mozo makes uh, a is mindful of people with busts and as you can see I have a bust um and so it's nice to work with a pattern that kind of has that in mind because I feel like that's not always the case but just really happy with it definitely gonna be something that I get a lot of wear out of so that's my finished object and what I'm wearing for works in progress or whips I as I've told you guys before I'm I try to be as monogamous of a knitter as possible. So you've seen this project before. I've made quite a bit of progress since my last video, but I'm working on the cozy winter shawl for the cozy winter knit along with South Paul Woolery. And so, oh, I guess I didn't finish this last round I started, which is normally I knit around and then I set it down, but I'll fidget with it to make sure it doesn't fall off my needles. So here it is in all its glory. So I've gotten to kind of to the final bit where it's the pattern stays consistent, but then it, it grows on the garter side. And you know, I, I'm really happy with it so far as I was knitting it. I was like, I don't know, is this too much texture? But now that I'm looking at it, I actually really like it, I think, especially once this garter grows. It'll be nice. Um, I joked with my friends I'm knitting with. At this point, it's kind of like a nice little kerchief. I don't mind that. That's pretty cute. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Series of kind of lace and uh, cable. You can see, or maybe you can't. I made a mistake pretty early on. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you can see that. But I don't know. I was talking to, I think I was watching Caroline's Knits podcast about imperfect knitting and, and, and mistakes you can live in with, or it's all just up to the knitter. And this is a mistake I can live with. I've knit a couple shawls now where I've made mistakes on them. And to be honest, because you wear, I wear it like a scarf wrapped around you never really see the mistake. I have sweaters that have mistakes in them and I'm cool with it to be completely honest. There are a few people in the knit along who uh, have like taken like the, say this whole round of cables and tanked it all the way down to redo it. And I find that amazing. I, I know I could do it, but like for instance, for me, these cables are supposed to be, uh, where, oh yeah, these two are not supposed to be the same, but I just wasn't thinking and I just kept doing them the same way instead of the reverse. And I, I'm still really happy with it. I'm not going to take it back. I, I think visually it's, it's similar. They're just not, I don't know how to describe it the cable should be twisting the opposite ways of each other and instead they're doing the exact same thing. But, you know, I think it's really nice. This is what drops air in the color Heather. I'm on to my second ball of it now. I honestly think 
I might not even use this whole ball um because you get a lot of you get a lot of yardage and it's going to be super soft I think it's going to be a really nice shawl so I think next time I do a video that might be done although I'm going to be traveling so maybe not now my other work in progress is a secret so I'm pretty positive she's not watching but Molly if you by some reason have tuned into my super long knitting podcast please skip over this next part or just stop watching period because this this project is a secret um also Gavin although I highly doubt Gavin is watching this this is my friends who are expecting so I'm really excited about this this is a work in progress I started this week and it is a baby anchor sweater. Oh, I'm obsessed with it. So I started this this week. Um, I've never met, knit a baby sweater before, but man, these work up fast. And so I had been looking around, looking around, looking around for a different project to knit for my friends who are expecting. And I just couldn't settle on anything. And so then I was watching the Knit Pearl Girls podcast, I believe, and she talked about the anchor sweater and how clever it was and how it's it's really easy to make, but it's, it's the result is really nice. And I'd seen pictures of it and, and really liked it. And she talked about how Petite Knit has a lot of different sizes from men's to women's to juniors to babies so I looked up the pattern and I was like yeah this looks great I think I'll get a lot of use out of it it has a lot of sizes and um oh my gosh it's just so cute like look how little it is so this is the 6 to 12 month size I thought about knitting the smaller one but I just feel like better bigger than smaller with babies I don't personally have a baby, so if I'm wrong with that, let me know. But this is using Malabrigo Rio, so I did size down my needles because uh, the pattern is written for DK, and this is a worsted weight, so it's a little thicker. And these are all scraps from different projects that I've knit. So this is from a headband I made for a Christmas present. This is from my night shift shawl that I knit about a year ago. The glaze, this is glazed carrot. Is this ochre, Frank ochre? The yellow, no, this is sunset. This is from my night shift shawl. This green pines is from my night shift shawl. This blue rails, Wales Road is from some mittens. Um, I can't remember the name of this red, but they're all Malabrigo Rios. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite yarns to work with. The colors are so vibrant. It's really, really soft. I think the Superwash will be, I know Superwash isn't the most um, environmentally friendly yarn, but I do think with a baby, you want something you can pop in the wash. And so I hope they get a lot of use. And I mean, even look at the interior. You can see I've already woven in my ends, which never happens. Uh, and it just is so nice. So I'm really excited about that. I am hoping to finish that this weekend. I just have the baby sleeves to do, which I can't imagine will take too long, although I will have to use. Um, I have the Chaigu, Chaigu shorties set, and I'm going to use those, which I do really like, but I find them a little fiddly, but much less fiddly than double pointed needles, so we'll take it. But yeah, here's my little bowl of scraps for that. So I'm excited to have a project that is gonna use up my scraps. So those are my current works in progress. And then I'm gonna do, I have a couple tests that I'm hoping to finish this week. They're small tests, so should be good. The first is the Estuary Beanie by my friend B at Bee Knits Handmade. She is uh, the creator of the famous lotus hat that has been designed for uh you've most likely seen it for malabrigo rasta but really any super bulky yarn and then she has modifications for um bulky yarn as maybe as 
uh, not, I don't think worsted, but anyway, she has a lot of really amazing hat and mittens design. It's like my first love in, in knitting really was, is hats and mittens. I love the instant gratification and the fun you can have with hats and her Lotus pattern is, is like just stunning. I've made a ton of them for families, friends, and markets, and it's definitely a winner. So she has a new beanie coming out uh, that I'm gonna test knit for. I really enjoy test knitting with her, and I am gonna be knitting it in Ba Sequoia, and this is the colorway Sweet Emotion, which is just so fun. I actually got this from B. She has a fiber shop as well. Lots of great worsted and up options, as well as stitch markers and other knits and notions. Definitely recommend checking her out. She's just a really wonderful person too. I really enjoy her and is one of the people that I really, I've met through Instagram that I always connect with. So here it is. If you're in the US, definitely recommend checking out her fiber, especially if you are hunting down for Malabrigo or Ba, which I love working with Ba and Malabrigo. Monastel Uruguay is another one that she has. She has a new one called Puma, which is an Italian yarn that I've not worked with, but I've heard really good things. So definitely recommend. So I will be doing that probably this weekend. It looks like a quick fun knit, so I don't think that'll take me too long. And then I am going to be test knitting for my other friend, Lisa, um, at LSB Creates. Uh, she has knit, um, she has a ton of designs. She is size inclusive. She has a lot of great work. I definitely recommend checking it out. My particular favorite is her Falling For You crop top, which I'm definitely gonna be making another one this um, summer. It's got this beautiful lace panel in the back. I'll pop in a picture of it. Um, and the fit is really nice on my bust. Uh, and she has all different sizes. When I started thinking about designing a sweater, she was super helpful, recommended books for me, and said she's she's just really, really great. So I really recommend following her. So I'm going to be testing the Aria Bralette for her. I have uh, this skein of worsted that I think will be enough. Uh, it's Barocco Vintage. I bought this originally for my sister because she wanted a headband and she's a little picky about colors, so I picked this neutral. She's 11, so I thought something machine washable would be good, but then she ended up going with a skein of Malabrigo that she loves and wears all the time. So yeah, so I think this will be good. Uh, I think it'll be a fun, quick project. Another one that I'm planning to either knit before I go to England or when I get, or while I'm there, I figure it's pretty portable, so. That's what's going on there. I'll pop a picture of that in as well. Okay. Now for a bit of a stash dive. So take a sip. So I have been knitting since, I would say consistently fall of 2020. So what does that get me at? About a year and a half of knitting, almost two years. And my tastes in yarn have changed a lot since I first started. So I will be honest, I'll pop in a picture of my stash, like maybe a video here. I have lots and lots and lots of super bulky yarn, especially woolies, thick and quick, that I bought at the beginning when I started knitting, still really like the yarn, just I'm not pulling from it right now. I think once I start stocking up for the winter, I might be using it more. I did do a scrappy Woolies blanket, and so I, I definitely am working towards working down that stash, but this stash dive does not have any of that yarn in it. So that all being said, I'm super interested in scrappy super bulky projects. I have tons of hats and mittens and cows, so maybe not those scrappy projects, but I just am curious, like what do people do with their super bulky yarns? Um, I think it's a little heavy for a sweater for myself or for a little one. Um, 
I think I need to commit to just kind of working through it because I like it, so I wanna use it, but if not, I might donate it. I um, have a really great store near me that does upcycle yarns, and I think the Woolies would do well there. I think they would get some donations and somebody would find a lot of use for it. So that's something, it's been sitting in my stash for a while. So that's my first caveat, is this yarn is not any of that yarn, and that is a large quantity of my yarn. I also have a, a, a large quantity of bulky weight yarn from a advent I did, which I love. And I'm planning on knitting a series of headbands out of those um, from Slam Fiber Co. Uh, she has a headband that I downloaded, the Pam, P-A-M-N P -A -M -N headband. So I'm planning on using a lot of those to make headbands. They're super pretty, so I'm excited about those. They're all hand dyed. I'm not going to be doing that advent again this year just because I, I've done a couple of projects where I get surprise skeins and I think it's maybe not for me unless I very intentionally pick projects with those mystery skeins in mind. I, for instance, did the Sorella Oopsie Sales, which I will feature my oopsies on another day. And I just don't know what I'm going to do with them. They're beautiful. I, they're, it's three, four skeins of DK. Three are a variegated purple. One is a nice cream. So they're definitely something I can use in a project, but I just have to really sit and puzzle. So I might do a part two, part three, part four of this. Um, but the yarn that I'm featuring today is most of my yarn that I've been kind of like actively planning around and then one chunk of yarn that I need some suggestions on. So let's get it going. Um, the first thing I want to start out with is the yarn that I need some help with. So I mentioned Scrap Be More. They, it's like Goodwill for fiber crafts, not fiber crafts, any crafts. Definitely recommend it if you're in this area. I think they're they're not just in Baltimore, they're all over. So um, I think they, it'd be like Scrap Chicago, Scrap New York, but we have Scrap Be More. So I, sometimes they get large quantity donations of discontinued yarn. And so I got this Debbie Bliss Merino Chunky. I originally got it for a sweater for my mom. At the time, I had not really knit a sweater before. So I saw 10 balls of it and I was like, of course I can make a sweater with it. Well, that's not the case necessarily. So I have 10 balls of it. It's this really pretty purple. And it's, um, I took some notes. It is 50 yards. Um, oh, is that right? No, 50 meters per 50 grams, which means I have 546 yards of it. So I have quite a bit of it. I had originally thought I might knit the Tidy Tee by Lily Kate Makes, which is like a cute kind of fitted tee. But I'm open to other suggestions. I don't know. It's 546 yards of chunky yarn. I would love to make a sweater or a cardigan, maybe a slipover. But if you have suggestions, let me know. It is really pretty. I have 10 balls of it, so I have quite a bit. It's like, I have it still in the kind of packaging. It came, yeah, just like that, brand new, I think discontinued from, I think Clover Hill Yarn Shop, if I were to guess. So, suggestions welcome. So next I have a, I have a lot of mohair. Again, my tastes have changed. I never would have thought when I first started knitting that I wanted to use mohair, but. So I have this really pretty kind of, um, rust and golden and copper. There we go. Like yarn, uh, mohair from, from Mezzo Makes. Uh, she started doing fiber and this is from her Mamma Mia collection, which this is Voulez Vu. I love Mamma Mia. Um, I love ABBA, my mom. Growing up, we listened to a lot of ABBA, so definitely a big fan. So I have four skeins of this. Um, here, I'll hold up three of them. 
And I am planning on making the Mohair Gallant by Kydri. I have had that one on my list for a while. I bought this yarn with it specifically in mind. And so that I think I will make probably pretty soon because I think it's like a nice lighter sweater so I could get some use out of it this summer, even though this is like a very autumn color. But that's, that's that right there. Put that over there. Um, I have 1,800 yards of that, so quite a bit. I, I should check the yardage on some of these, but I believe that should still be plenty. Um, so I'm, it's a bit of a Kydri party over here because I have like three patterns of hers that I'm planning on making, but I've already knit a couple of them and really like them. Okay. I got this really nice, uh, silk merino blend. It's coming up kind of grayish, but it's this really nice silvery purple color almost. So this is a 50% silk, 50% merino wool. It's got a really nice sheen. I have 438 yards of it. Hi, Aria. And um, she's gonna get comfy. And I think I wanna make, I think this Villa, this Villa camisole by Kydri with it. Uh, it's like a nice, simple fitted tank. And I think this would have really nice drape. I think, I think the project does call for like a silk yarn. And so this is a silk merino. I really enjoyed working with silk merino yarn when I did the Farfa top. So when I saw that, that skein I got, it's from Northbound Knitting which I need to check into them to see if they are still in existence. But that is from the yarn estate sale that I went to. And so I got that for $2.50. And it's super, it's super nice. I don't think I would have gravitated towards that, you know, even four months ago. But since I had such a great experience knitting with the silk merino a blend from Sorella. I jumped right on it. I saw one skein of it and I was like, I can do something with that. So I think this this Vila, this Vila camisole by Kadri is, is what I'm gonna do. All right, so then we've got next, I've shown this one. I think I showed it last time in my acquisitions, but I have the Surrey Alpaca out of the woods from Sorella and I'm planning on holding it together with this Snow Cascade Heritage Sock, which is a superwash merino with nylon. I'm now gonna start moving away from the superwash merino. I hand wash all my knits anyway, so I kind of feel like the appeal of superwash, especially if I can maintain the softness of it with some of the other Cascade yarns or other fingering or sock weight yarns, then if I'm already hand washing, I might as well move towards non superwash. But this Surrey alpaca is unbelievably soft. And man, there's a lot of yardage 437 yards for 100 grams. So I think I have two skeins of it. So I am planning on making the Daily Ritual Raglan by Park and Knit. I am going to do the short sleeve modification that she posted. I think that is going to be really nice. It's it's a deep raglan, um, oversized. I think I'll knit a size down from it because I, I find sometimes I look a little frumpy in the super oversized stuff. That's personal preference. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And I think held together with this, it'll be really soft, but this won't, you'll get to see like the color variation in there. Um, Although I'm looking at it and sometimes I wonder if like a light gray would work. So I'll have to swatch it and see what's up. I have um, some Cascade fingering weight non-superwash in my cart in mind for this next project. So I will actually, I think I'm going to skip over one to talk about this. So speaking of scrap, 
Um, I got, <laughs> I couldn't believe my luck. I got this skein of, it's La Bien Ami hand dyed yarn from Paris. It's a mohair, it's 70 mohair, 30 silk in this colorway, winter fell. I got one of these at scrap for $15. Um, they had one skein of it and I wasn't gonna get it because one skein mohair, I'd only used mohair once. I wasn't really sure what to do with it, but I just kept picking it up and I love blue. This is like a gorgeous dark blue, but it has a really nice sheen to it. It's just gorgeous, so soft. So I just kept coming back to it, kept coming back to it. So I bought it and I figured, okay, I can make, there's a bunch of one skein mohair projects out there, but none of them were really calling to me. So I went online and I found a place, I forget where I bought it, that sells it. And I got another skein of the winter fell. And honestly, like, I feel like they're pretty close. I know sometimes with um, hand dyed, you can get totally different colors. This one, it feels like darker to me, but I think it's just because some, some of times the, the thread going through catches the light a little differently than it does on this one. So I think they're a pretty close color match. It is the same colorway. Anyway, I was just over the moon. And so my plan is to hold this together with a, a, like a fingering weight, probably a, like a silver or gray, and make the sheer V sweater by Jessie Made. It's got like a V neck like this where there's a panel that I believe is just the mohair. And so it's, like sexy without being revealing, which I, I like because I feel pretty uncomfortable wearing things that are low cut. Um, so that's why like this works out pretty well for me. I like that it has the V-neck without it feeling revealing. Personal preference for me. Um, the sheer V sweater has like bell sleeves and it's cropped. And so I actually have a sweater already that like a like a machine made sweater that I bought years ago that has that kind of fit and I really like how it looks on me so I'm excited to make one myself so that is my plan for that I haven't bought the fingering weight yarn again I, I mentioned I think I'll probably use the cascade I think 220 or um non super wash they have tons of colors it's available at webs or yarn.com so I think that's kind of my thought there and then my, well, I have two more. Okay, this yarn, I did the cardinal sin of caking this up before I was ready to knit with it. And so I'm a little scared about the condition of it because I caked this up so long ago and it was in my early days. I've learned so much since I bought this. But this is Malabriga... Malabrigo Mecha in Anniversario, which is one of my favorite colorways by them. I have 780 yards of it, um, so six skeins of it. And my plan is to make the Gossamer Twist sweater by Kaidri. Uh, she now has several versions of it, but this was the original, which is, is a bulky weight, which would be a bulky yarn held with two uh, two strands of mohair. I need to swatch this because I don't know if, I don't know what mohair I would hold with this. I was actually thinking like a dark blue would look nice, but I wouldn't want it to take away from the variegation of the yarn. So if you have ideas, um, because I just, Mohair is, it's not cheap. So I don't wanna kind of try a bunch of stuff and not like it. Um, and I, I do really wanna make this sheer beer sweater with this. Otherwise I would I would probably consider using this. 
Um, but I think I need to swatch this alone and see how I like the fabric. And then if it's maybe a little, uh, if, if there's too many stitches then consider adding in a strand of mohair, but I think a darker, like a dark blue or maybe a pink could look good with this. I, I've heard that with variegated, you kind of want to go with the darker shade of mohair as to not wash it out. And I don't want to do a variegated mohair with a variegated yarn. But anyway, I think this yarn will look really lovely in a sweater like the Gossamer Twist because it's, it's mostly stockinette. So I think the yarn will really get to sing. So I am really excited about that. But this will definitely be a winter project for me because it'll be really heavy and I'm I feel like in the summer I just will not want to work on that. So I also think Mecha is a bulky weight yarn, but it's it's pretty I mean it's single ply, but it's pretty thin for a bulky weight yarn. So I feel like it some on a on a Especially if it's been sitting on a cake for this long, it might be worsted at this point, but ugh, I don't want to think about that too much. So here we go. Okay, so for my last stash diving project, this is one I plan to do imminently. I uh, am going to England this upcoming Thursday. And we're going to be bopping around quite a bit. And while I would love to bring a bunch of knitting, realistically, I'm probably not going to be knitting very much because we're going to be busy. I think I need kind of like a, I'm not somebody who knits very well in public unless it's a project that I really don't have to think about at all because I just get really distracted. I'm worried about just leaving my stuff somewhere. So I thought this might be a good time to try socks. They're small, they're portable. I could just bring my shorty set, which is really, really travel friendly, very small. Uh, and I have this really, really lovely sock set that I got from Polar Bear Yarns. So this was one of her mystery clubs or mystery ones that she did last summer. The colorway is called Worm Summer Nights and it is naturally dyed with logwood, indigo, and Quebrancho Rojo. It is uh, 80 Superwash Merino 20 Nylon, and I have a full skein and a mini skein. So full skein is about 400 yards. The mini skein is 80. So I think I'm going to make just like a very basic yarn, sorry, a very basic sock. Summerly Lit Knits has a free kind of basic yarn, uh, sorry, basic sock that I think I'm going to go for. And... I'm excited. I think the biggest thing is I think I'll enjoy knitting socks, but the heels. Uh, so I would be curious if people have good heel recommendations. I think I'll probably follow the pattern on my first one, but I, uh, I've done wrap and turn like short row heels. And I honestly, I did it in a bulky weight yarn and it made me cry. <laughs> so, uh, if you have your favorite heel recommendations and maybe a good tutorial for sock heels, let me know. But yes, um, Polar Bear Yarns, she's great naturally dyed yarns, she's based in the US. I love her colors. Um, this is my, I think my only purchase, but I always look at her drops because I just love her colors. And hey, who knows, maybe I'll become a sock knitter and I'm gonna start buying more of it, so. I've also considered just doing some DK weight socks, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to bring this with me and my needles and we'll see what happens. Um, I think that's the only thing I'm going to bring with me. We're trying to pack light as possible and I'm going to be in England. So there are yarn shops there. Worst case, I can always buy yarn. So, wow, what a, what a day. Um, I know... I have talked about working really actively to work through my stash. And so I'm happy mostly that I have assigned projects for most of these things. Writing up these yardages was actually really helpful. And so I definitely want to do that with some of my other like skeins 
and come up with project ideas for them. So I think I'll feature some of those in the future. And I, maybe I'll just do a tell Brie what patterns to make uh, so that you guys can send me recommendations. I spend a lot of time looking through the Ravelry. Like I have this much worsted weight yarn. What can I make with it? But I feel like Ravelry, there's so many patterns um, that sometimes it's just like overwhelming and really hard to sort through. So I'm also just starting to learn like yarn subbing and oh, when you add in a mohair, it, it, it increases the weight of the yarn. So those things are, and the math behind that, which I've saved an article recently on math for holding yarn together because it's definitely an area that I want to get stronger in so that I can have more options when it comes to patterns. And then also something I'd like to do is maybe like a color work sweater. So for that chunky yarn that I have, is there a color work sweater out there where that could be the main color? And then I am introducing another color for a uh, color work yoke. I don't know. It's a bulky yarn. So I feel like a lot of color work is not in bulky yarn. But I definitely am interested in a color work tee. So something maybe like, yeah, like a circular color work yoke. That's something I'm definitely very interested in. I saw a test net recently. I think it was called like the coloring book tee. And it was so cute. So something like that, I think, uh, would be good. But yeah, so that's my video today. I, like I said, I'm going to be leaving for England on Thursday, so I will probably be pretty quiet here and on Instagram. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, just really, I really like talking about yarn, so I appreciate you sticking with me. If you have recommendations for projects for that super bulky, sorry, not the Debbie Bliss bulky, I would love to hear it. Uh, thoughts on heels for socks. That would be great. But yeah, I think right now my plan is the Summer Lee. She had a free sock pattern that I think is like a pretty basic. I think it was called like the ba the So Basic Sock. So I think that's what I'm going to start with. And who knows? Maybe next time I do one of these, I'm going to be a sock knitter. Anything could happen. All right. Well, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for sticking with me and I will chat with you soon. Bye.